Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mehdi Kazamzadeh, and I'd like to first thank the organizer for inviting me in this presentation. I will talk about the regulatory science perspective of antimicrobial orthopedic implants. In November 2020, FDA held a public workshop entitled Orthopedic Device Related Infections. We are also observing that the number of FDA anti-infective orthopedic devices has significantly increased in the past few years. Therefore, it's obvious that there is an unmet need for antimicrobial orthopedic implants. As a disclaimer, this presentation reflects my view and should not be construed to represent FDA views or policies. Here I have collected some statistics regarding orthopedic implants associated infections. Depending on the type of spine surgery being performed, this incidence of infection is highly variable with ranges reported listed between 0% and 18%. In 2011, total cost of patients discharged from a hospital with the diagnosis of either a spinal infection or complication of a spinal surgery were estimated to be $12.4 billion. Infection is the most complication, uh, common complication is spine surgery with a cost of treatment from about $16,000 to $39,000. I have put some similar statistics for joint arthroplasty. Uh, the major one is that uh, about 8% and 15% of revisions of total hip arthroplasty and total knee arthroplasty respectively are due to infection. Both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria are responsible for orthopedic infections. Uh, the gram-positive bacteria are the major ones that play uh, are responsible for 66% uh, and the gram negative are responsible for about 15% of the orthopedic infections. Among all pathogens, Staphorius is the most common microorganism responsible for 20% to 84% of the all spinal infections, while approximately 5% to 20% of spinal infections are caused by streptococci and enterococci. If you look at the table, you notice that the prevalence of bacteria strains for different orthopedic implants are different. For example, while Staphorius is responsible for about 50% of infections involved into fracture fixation devices, it is responsible for about 22% of hip and knee arthroplasty infections. Also, while Staph epidermitis is responsible for about 45% of hip and knee arthroplasty infections, it has low pathogenicity for spinal infections and is responsible for about 20% of infections regarding fracture fixation devices. Bacteria are categorized, categorized into gram-positive and gram-negative, uh, as I said, and when they attach uh, to the implant within few hours after implantation, uh, monocytes, which are the immune system, first encounter the bacteria in low numbers and have a narrow time window in which they can efficiently eliminate bacteria. Once the bacteria become too numerous and begin to agglomerate, the monocytes are no longer effective as scavengers and um, the presence of bacteria, endotoxin and lipopolysaccharide is well known to trigger chronic inflammatory responses, including the release of cytokines and recruitment of macrophages, giant cells and osteoclasts, which lead to more aggressive foreign body responses. When an aggressive foreign body response occurs, the device is walled out off from the body, allowing for bacteria growth and persistently delayed device integration. In 1987, the orthopedic surgeon Anthony G. Cristina described the concept of race to the, for the surface. This concept describes the competition between host cells and contaminating bacteria to occupy the biomaterial surfaces. Thus, the great challenge is to design implants that make this, the race being won by eukaryotic cells, covering all biomaterial surfaces at the same time as, in, as, as at the same time that inhibit bacteria colonization. Among the factors that involve the bacteria attachments, surface topography, grain structure, chemistry, substrate stiffness, and hydrophilicity all modulate the bacteria attachment. After the attachment of bacteria to the surface, they assemble to create microcolonies and finally form a mature structure called biofilm responsible for up to 75% of all bacterial infection. The, there are problems with systemic infection treatments. 
Uh, the major ones is that the low drug concentration at the infection site, there is a, a problem with the potential toxicity. There is no control over drug release and there is a risk of emergence of resistant organism with systemic infection treatment. Based on the CDC report in 2020, over 2.8 million resistant infections are reported per year. Therefore, there is an unmet need for local delivery of antimicrobial or developing antimicrobial surfaces. There are two types of antimicrobial surfaces, antimicrobial coatings and anti-fouling coatings. Simply put, the first being able to kill microbes when they approach the, surface, the device surface, while the other repel microorganisms. There are some novel technologies for killing bacteria, including bio-inspired nanostructured surfaces uh, that have shown to be able to kill bacteria upon contact by physical mechanical rupture of the bacteria cell wall. For example, shark skin consists of millions of nano ridges arranged in a diamond pattern. This texture enables the process called mechanotransduction, which basically provides mechanical stress on the microorganism. In such an environment, bacteria lives no longer than 18 minutes, which is not enough lifetime for reproduction. Some other techniques which are under development are using magnetic field and low level electrical stimulation at the implant surface. Also antimicrobial peptides are novel antimicrobial agents to be used. Currently, there is no guidance document to explain the special controls required by the Agency for Antimicrobial Associated Medical Devices. The only guidance document from 2007 was withdrawn by the agency and the guidance document published in 2019 intended to assist with a specific susceptibility test. In an effort led by Dr. Phillips from OCEL, that was published in ASTM conference preceding, VV discussed the challenges with current in vitro performance testing, as well as some possible pathways to the successful development of antimicrobial combination product standards. We concluded that although standards have been developed for environment application, there is an urgent need for the community to work together toward developing standard methods that can better assess antimicrobial and antibiofilm technologies, specifically for medical device application. FDA has also published uh, an SOP regarding 510K eligibility criteria for devices with antimicrobial agents. The medical devices with antimicrobial agents to be substantially equivalent with the predicate should have the same identity, formulation, concentration, technology, and indication for use. To be realistic, due to very limited number of antimicrobial orthopedic devices to be used as predicates, 510K pathway is not really helpful for orthopedic devices with antimicrobial agents or technology. Another important regulatory factor for orthopedic devices with antimicrobial agents is identifying the primary mode of action. If the primary mode of action is that of a device and the antimicrobial activity is physically based, and does not involve chemical action or immobilization for achievement of its intended purpose, the device would be assigned to CDRH. If the primary mode of action is that of a device, however, the antimicrobial activity involves chemical action being metabolized for an achievement of its intended purpose, the device would be considered a combination product. If the primary mode of action is attributable to the antimicrobial component of antimicrobial device combination product, the product would be considered a drug and is assigned to the CDR. FDA believes the following indications may be appropriate for devices that include antimicrobial agents, reduce or prevent device-related infections, and reduce or inhibit microbial colonization on a medical device. There are challenges involved the antimicrobial surfaces, which include Effectiveness versus toxicity, we should answer if the inclusion of the antimicrobial affect the effectiveness of the product, what is the safe and effective dose of the antimicrobial agent, uh, are there safety concerns regarding interactions of the two antimicrobial, for example, systemic versus local, and what is the synergy effects of antimicrobial agents used. 
the major an ideal antimicrobial combination product demonstrates potent antimicrobial features while maintaining biocompatibility. And it's very challenging to sustain biocompatibility and uh, be antimicrobial. The, also, the, uh, the addition of the antimicrobial properties should not interfere with mechanical stability of the, the orthopedic devices. Um, there, there is a difference between biofilm eradication and antimicrobial property. The device that is claimed to be biofilm, uh, that is combating biofilm should show that it can destroy the matrix of biofilm. Also, the antimicrobial coating should show that it has a sustained release profile and it doesn't uh, develop antimicrobial resistance. By this, I conclude my presentation. Thanks for attention.